TV recap tier, today I'm going to explain a horror show called Brand New Cherry Flavor. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the early 90s, a filmmaker named Lisa is driving to Los Angeles in the middle of the night. She stops by a gas station and uses the payphone to call her ex-boyfriend Code. A few moments later, a man riding a motorcycle mysteriously stops by the gas station as well. Code was surprised when Lisa called because he has not heard from her for a long time. She tells him that she is going to Los Angeles to meet with a famous director named Lou Burke and she needs a place to sleep. Code happily offers his couch to Lisa and gives her his address. Lisa drives to his address and the motorist follows her. Lisa arrives at Code's address. They have a quick catch up and hug each other goodnight. The following morning, Lisa wakes up and sees Christine, Code's girlfriend, eating and looking at her. She tells Lisa that she works in real estate and Lisa tells her that she is a filmmaker and she is scheduled to meet Lou Berg today. Lisa arrives at a restaurant and sees Lou there. She asks him about how he saw her short film, but Lou does not answer and continues to talk about a lot of random things instead. He also interrupts Lisa when she was asked to talk about her life. Lisa seems to be very annoyed by this and asks Lou what they are doing right now. Lou might have felt the irritation in Lisa's voice and he eventually talks about seeing a tape on his desk and deciding to watch it. He likes a paranoid thriller movie because it's tense and scary. Because of this, he wants to make a full-length movie version. Lisa tells Lou that she wants to direct a movie, but Lou seems to have his hesitations because she is a rookie director and the movie may not sell, but he eventually brushes off these hesitations. Outside the restaurant, they see an aliased actor named Roy Hardaway. Lou and Roy know each other and Lou introduces Lisa to Roy. From afar, Lisa diverts her attention to a motorist that seems to be looking at her, but the motorist soon drives away. Lou notices that Lisa's car is not in its best condition anymore. He gives her a $10,000 deposit and advises her to get an apartment. He also sent Lisa the contract and she had it reviewed by Code and Christine's friend Jules. He tells Lisa that the contract confirms that she's the one directing the film. Lisa delightfully signs the contract. Lisa, along with Code and Christine, starts looking for a new apartment. She loves the place despite Christine's remarks like coyotes are hanging around the area at night. She decides to settle in this apartment. Considering that she is a rookie director, Lou starts mentoring Lisa on how to sell herself to the public. In the evening, Lisa hears cats hissing outside her apartment. She goes outside to take a look and sees a group of cats feasting on a dead coyote. She is grossed out and goes back inside. It is shown that a woman is looking at her from afar. Lou continues to mentor Lisa, but Lisa keeps on ending up with the cliched promotional lines. She feels defeated because of this. Lou asks Lisa to find who her audience is and they go out for a ride to relax Lisa's mind. Later in the evening, Lisa tells Lou that her audience is her mother. She never got the chance to meet her and this film could be her way to connect with her. Lou finds this beautiful and invites her to an art event with a lot of movie stars, which is a great opportunity for Lisa. In the car on the way to the event, Lou tells Lisa his plan to have Alvin to produce her film. Lisa is exhilarated with what she hears and thanks Lou. Lou puts his hand on Lisa's thigh and it is evident that Lisa is uncomfortable with this gesture. She removes Lou's hand on her thigh and Lou apologizes. Lisa breaks the ice by saying that they make a great team. On the event, Lou leaves Lisa for a while and she bumps into Roy. Roy tells her that a woman is holding a cat who has been staring at her the moment she walked in. It is the same woman that stared at Lisa the night she saw the cats eating a coyote. Roy leaves and the woman approaches her. She introduces herself as Borrow and informs Lisa that Lou is having a very important meeting right now without her. She offers her services such as hurting someone. Borrow requests Lisa to hold her cat. To demonstrate her services to Lisa, she asks Lisa to imagine that Lou is a house and she is inside him. She then asks her to break something. Afterward, she takes back her cat and writes her address on Lisa's wrists and in case she wants her services. She tells Lisa to bring her cat and leaves. Lisa is confused because she just took her cat from her. Lou arrives and tells Lisa that he saw Alvin in the bathroom. He is wiping his nose with a tissue and Lisa asks what happened. 
He says that he and Alvin were talking when blood gushed out of his nose suddenly. Lisa is perplexed by this. Lou says that Alvin already left the event and Lisa starts to panic because she was not able to meet Alvin. Lou calms her down and informs her that Alvin agreed to produce her film. Lisa is hesitant about this because they just agreed in the bathroom without watching her short film. She verifies if Alvin knows that she is the one directing the film, but Lou does not acknowledge the question. Lisa doesn't seem to be glad about the so-called good news. Lou stops the car and caresses Lisa's ear. This irks Lisa and she gets out of the car. Lou follows her and tries to kiss her, but Lisa pushes him back. He explains that he misread everything and goes back to the car. Lisa doesn't follow him and Lou leaves her alone. Back in her apartment, Lisa tries to erase Boro's address on her wrist, but it doesn't seem to come off. Code enters her apartment to check how she's doing. He informed her that Jules is now directing her movie. Lisa is shocked by this revelation and goes straight to Lou's house to confront him where she meets Lou's wife and his son Jonathan. Lisa says that she will not give the rights to her work if she's not directing it. But Lou feels sorry for her because she signed the contract without knowing what's written on it. He explains that either people are predators or prey. Lisa cries and threatens Lou that he'll regret what he's done and walks out of the house. He follows her and asks her to apologize. Lisa is stunned by Lou's audacity and calls him a washed up filmmaker. This angers Lou. He chokes Lisa and slams her onto the car. Lisa drives straight to Boro's address, planning to exact revenge on Lou. She is welcomed by the motorist earlier and it is revealed that he is undead. Boro asks for the first payment up front and tells Lisa how special she is. She starts squirming and vomits a kitten. Boro is delighted to see the kitten and asks Lisa what she wants. She answers that she wants her movie back and she wants to set Lou's life on fire. Boro accepts this and says that they can do that. Boro gets into work and explains that she creates custom job for each of her clients. She says that for this curse to work, Lisa must open herself to the spirit world. Boro starts asking questions about Lisa's personal life. This leads her to the information that her father was dead. She lost her virginity to a girl named Isabel, and she has not even once met her mother. Boro gives Lisa a drink to soothe her throat. Meanwhile, Lou and Roy are watching Lisa's short film and Lou tells Roy that he's adapting the short film into a full length feature. Roy is amazed by the film and tells Lou that he cannot adapt it without Lisa. Back in Boro's place, Boro's preparing a stew for Lisa that is made of guinea pigs insides. Lisa is disgusted by the stew. Boro explains that the stew will make her more receptive to the spirits and this is the only thing that she can eat and drink for the next 24 hours. She further elaborates the binding ritual that will bind Lisa to Lou so that she can use Lisa to hurt Lou. She makes Lisa eat a piece of meat from the stew. She also adds the following instructions. Lisa needs to eat every last bit of the stew or else the curse won't work. She needs to come back to Borrow's place by 11 p.m. tomorrow and she needs to have Lou's photo and a pinch of his pubic hair. As soon as she leaves Borrow's place, Lisa starts to get hallucinations and her vision gets blurry. She goes straight to Code's place but she struggles to do so as she hears eerie noises along the way. Some spirits are starting to appear around her as well. Upon arriving inside Code's apartment, Lisa asks Code to help on breaking into Lou's house to get some things needed for her to put a curse on Lou. Ko does not agree with this and asks if she's under influence of something. Lisa explains that the stew has something in it and it will help her in her curse. Code says that what she is into is probably a bad idea. Lisa tells him that Lou took her movie and he choked her as well, showing her the marks on her body. Christine tells Code that since he's a high-end dealer, he may have known someone. This convinces Code and informs Lisa that he knows two discreet dudes named Joe and Lee. He does not have their contact numbers, but he refers Lisa to the restaurant where the two frequently eat as far as his memory serves him right. 
Lisa is exhilarated by this information and hugs both Code and Christine. She asks for cash and Code gives it right away. She immediately leaves the apartment and goes straight to the restaurant. In the restaurant, she sees two men eating and approaches them, saying that Code referred them to her. She walks them through the plan of distracting Lou's housekeeper to buy some time for her to gather the things needed for the curse. She gives them 50 bucks each and the two agree with the plan. The three go straight to Lou's house and encounter the housekeeper. The two men enter the house and distract her as planned. Lisa enters the house but she is seen by the housekeeper. She goes upstairs and gets one of Lou's photos. She enters one of the bedrooms and sees Jonathan. To her surprise, she explains to him that she is in his bedroom not because she is having adult encounters with Jonathan's father, but rather she is trying to put a curse on his dad and she needs some of his pubic hair. He laughs upon hearing this and supports Lisa on her plan since he hates his father as well. He points her to Lou's bedroom. Upon leaving Jonathan's bedroom, Lisa hears that one of the men's names is James. The two men are rushing to leave the place because the housekeeper has already called the cops. She asks why his name is James when their names should be Joe and Lee. They admit that they just did it for the 50 bucks. James and Lisa get into an argument but are stopped by the other guy. The two men immediately leave the place, leaving Lisa alone. Lisa goes to Lou's bedroom to find a piece of his pubic hair on his bed, but to no avail. In the process, she sees a horrendous creature and this scares her, causing her to run out of the house. Unfortunately, the police already arrived at the location and caught her red-handed at the front door. She is thrown into prison. One of the girls in prison knows Burrow and tells Lisa the bad things happen to people who do not meet the end of their bargains with Burrow. The other woman starts to gang up around Lisa and mock the way she looks and smells when she suddenly vomits another kitten. The girls are disgusted by this and step back. One of the police takes the kitten and tells Lisa that she got bailed, apparently by Roy. Roy tells Lisa that he saw her film last night and he found it incredible. He also tells her that he wants her to direct the film herself. Lisa shares that she's putting a curse on Lou, but she needs his pubic hair. Roy gives Lisa a ride back home and also tells a story about how he killed his sister because he was driving irresponsibly. He drives Lisa home and when he drops her off, he tells her to stop pursuing the curse because people like Lou will eventually destroy themselves. In her apartment, Lisa is surprised to see Lou along with two of his workers. Lou teases her that he heard about the curse that she wants to put on him, but she needs his pubic hair. He also wants to make amends with Lisa and tells her that they got off the wrong foot. He asks Lisa what it will take to bring her out there, but Lisa doesn't answer. Realizing that the conversation will lead nowhere, Lou offers his pubic hair to Lisa and she quickly takes it off of him. He taunts good luck on her curse and leaves. Lisa checks the time and she still has 30 minutes before 11 pm. She quickly finishes her stew and drives to Borrow. When she meets Borrow, she asks her why does she keep on puking kittens. Borrow answers that she would normally ask for cash payments but in Lisa's case, kittens as payments are enough. Lisa also tells Boro that she's been seeing weird stuff all day. But Boro says that the spirits will be gone after this ritual. Boro burns Lou's photos and pubic hair together and asks Lisa to drink medicine and think of Lou. During the ritual, Lisa starts to squirm on the floor and she cannot move her body. While paralyzed, she sees the same creature from earlier and freaks out. Boro calms her down and tells her that everything is alright. The next morning, Boro is seen taking blood from the cat and then drinking it. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.